Welcome back, America. I want to move on to another topic right now with our dear friend Jim Trusty, really uh, one of my favorite legal analysts. He was a DOJ prosecutor. He's with the IFRA law firm, former President Trump attorney as well on the documents case. Jim Trusty, um, I smell a rat in Manhattan. All of a sudden, really at the 11th hour, the 11th hour and change. Suddenly, the U.S. Attorney's Office says, we have 31,000 31, pages of documents. The DA says, yeah, okay. Oh, and by the way, they say, we have more to deliver next week. Oh, the DA says, okay. And he says to the court, all right, we agree the defense should have another 30 days. And the defense, President Trump's lawyer said, no, we need 90 days. That's a lot of stuff. And by the way, just because you give us this stuff doesn't mean it ends there. We may have to go back on witnesses. We may have to collect other information. We have, we have to do our job, not just respond to you. Am I wrong about smelling something fishy here? No, I think you're dead on. Look, I mean, at the eve of trial, there are usually discovery obligations where the government turns over some material to the defense. It's usually referred to under a couple of cases, Jenks and Giglio or Giglio. And it basically means witness statements as well as negative information, things that cut against the credibility of those witnesses. So I think there's something really interesting here, probably a document dump where a lot of it's garbage, but somewhere in there, there's probably even more information about Michael Cohen, the star witness in this New York case. I mean, remember, he's a failed prosecutor to the U.S. Attorney's Office in Manhattan. They walked away from this steaming pile of a case, and they basically didn't even give him credit for cooperating because he lied so much of the time. So I suspect that there are some real gems in there. They may cause a need for follow-up. They may cause a need for additional discovery requests, but it's not going to be all good news for Alvin Bragg's prosecution in those 31,000 pages that, again, should have been turned over realistically a long time ago. This case has been a long time coming. Not much transparency on these incredibly important uh, public corruption cases that are going to make history. But I, I think we take a wait and see. There'll be something that comes out of the Trump team in coming days or weeks that might be pretty, uh, pretty devastating in terms of what's going on. Let me suggest something that hasn't been suggested, but as an old chief of staff to an attorney general, I could, I could envision my former attorney general, uh, Ed Meese, sitting here watching this and saying, uh, we're going to intervene in this case. What do you mean? This is interfering with a federal election. This case is bogus. Now we have this last minute document dump. I want us, the feds, to interfere in this case and make the argument at a federal court level that should handle this case, that this is nothing more than election interference. I could see him saying, I'm not going to put up with this, this stuff going on at a local level with a local elected Democrat judge, with a, with a DA who is obviously a Soros partisan DA, uh, with my own, if I were him, U.S. Attorney's Office dumping 31,000 pay. I'm, I would say, honestly, I would say, Mark, Mr. Chief of Staff, let's have a conversation with the Criminal Division of the Justice Department, the Public Integrity Section. We want to intervene. This is outrageous. We need to deal with this case. What do you think? Well, what you're really talking about is the necessity to have character, people of character, in our highest law enforcement perches. And that's what's missing right now. You've got an attorney general who hides behind Jack Smith, although he supervises all of these federal cases. And to go back to this New York and this intervention idea, there's been an intervention in the wrong direction. Remember, Alvin Bragg, even Alvin Bragg's office, uh, announced that they weren't going to pursue this ridiculous kind of creative prosecution against President Trump, you know, threading in federal offenses into a state charging document to avoid a statute of limitations problem. DOJ then sent a high-level official to go work as Alvin Bragg's right hand as his senior advisor, and lo and behold, their office takes a change of course and decides to proceed on this case that relies almost entirely on the credibility of one Michael Cohen. So there's a lot of problems with how DOJ's acting. You don't have an Ed Meese character in that front office right now. You've got a guy no. who hides behind Jack Smith, who appreciates very creative, and I use that as a pejorative term, prosecutions against a sitting president or a former president and someone who is the number one contender against this administration. I just want the public to understand an attorney general could seek intervention on money grounds, including we don't agree 
with this local prosecutor's interpretation of the Federal Election Act. We don't agree with the actions that are being taken by our own U.S. Attorney's Office. So we're going to take over this case in Washington, D.C. We don't agree with the dumping of documents at the last second. We don't agree to the intervention of an, in an election like this. Our policy has been that that's not to be done, and we're not going to allow the abuse and misuse of federal law to do that. I'm just telling you, I know how my attorney general would act, which underscores your point. These people are corrupt, and I don't mean they're taking money. I mean they are corrupt. They are political, partisan hacks. They have lit a fire to our justice system in four different jurisdictions, with three different Democrat prosecutors, with 91 ridiculous charges against a man who was the sitting president, who's running for president. I mean, it, it's just so obvious what's taking place here. When we come back, Jim Trusty, let's move to Georgia. We have new information about Georgia. A uh, little bizarre in my view. Uh, quite frankly, but at least a partial win, I think, for the good guys. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.